every time when a waitress would tell them, we don't serve colored folks here, they would ignore that. And they kept on sitting and asking for coffee. I never did hear them ask for nothing else but coffee. I remember watching the evening news. I would see dogs biting individuals. I saw individuals being spat on. I saw individuals being beaten. And I couldn't understand why. But I keep hearing these words, freedom riders. When I got off and went over to the phone booth, a pickup truck, white men, pulled up at the little bus station. They literally dragged Frank and the three girls out, put them in the back of the truck, and drove off. Now, I knew if they found me, it would have been another lynching that night. In 1961, a group of civil rights activists participated in freedom rides across the South. While on these freedom rides, they attempted to test the enforcement of the Supreme Court's decision in Boynton v. Virginia. The activists would protest by riding the bus across states where Jim Crow laws were still being enforced and attempt to use whites-only restrooms, waiting rooms, and lunch counters. Hezekiah Watkins was 13 years old when freedom riders came to Jackson, Mississippi in 1961. Watkins wanted to join in protest, but it nearly cost him everything, including his life. 73-year-old Hezekiah Watkins now spends his days working at the Mississippi Civil Rights Museum. Only, he's not just an employee. He's a part of history. And so you grew up in the midst of the civil rights movement. What do you remember most about that time? Well, I remember watching the the evening news, I would see dogs biting individuals. I saw individuals being spat on. I saw individuals being beaten. And I couldn't understand why. But I keep hearing this, these words, freedom riders. The freedom riders traveled throughout the South protesting segregation and Jim Crow laws. In 1961, they came to Jackson. Watkins, just 13 at the time, disobeyed his mother by going to see the peaceful protests, only to be arrested and sent to prison. They didn't give you any charges? They didn't give you no, any explanation? Oh, nothing. When I got there, they didn't ask me nothing. They took me directly to a cell. I said, I haven't done anything. Oh yeah, you've done something. You wouldn't be here if you hadn't done anything. Uh, did, did they give you a date? A date for what, sir? Did they give you a date to kill you? At just 13 years old, Watkins was put on death row. After five days in prison, he says, Mississippi's governor, Ross Barnett, ordered his release. From that moment on, he spent his life working as an activist, organizing boycotts and registering black voters in Mississippi. He was arrested over 100 times, often with unnecessary force. And I'm sure you've seen the video of George Floyd. When you saw that, what came to your mind? To see how the officer just, just pinned his knee on his neck and just like he forgot all about it. Treated him like he was just not human. But it made me sad. It made me want to, I don't know, do something, but then you ask yourself, what could you do? Where are we going? Where is the country going from here after what we saw this past summer? The way to go was to register and vote. And that's what we started on. And by registering and voting, the results is here in Mississippi. Like I said, the pudding is in the pie based on what we started years ago and based on what is happening now. And to answer your question, yes, sir, things are much better. In our next story, we'll hear from Betty Daniels Rosemond, who grew up in a segregated New Orleans where Jim Crow was the law of the land. Her experiences with racism pushed her to become a freedom writer and fight for change in the country through an organization named CORE, the Congress of Racial Equality. We knew every time we took a ride, 
that if we died, we died. Was there fear among you and your friends when you went out or a fear that maybe you weren't doing the right things or going to the right places that, that you would be stopped by police or harassed? Oh, you would be stopped, but you had to, if they tell you to move, for instance, if you got on a Metro bus and a white person wanted your seat, they could insist that you move and go to the back of the bus because that part was for black people. And if you didn't do what they said, you would be arrested. So that was always, you had to do it or you paid consequences. At 21, Betty Daniels Rosemond, then Betty Daniels, decided to leave school at LSU to join the Freedom Riders. I went through some of the training. One of the girls slapped me and almost knocked me down, but that was part of your training to see if you would retaliate, and you couldn't retaliate. Betty and four others went on a freedom ride from New Orleans to Mobile, Alabama, just days after another group's bus was bombed. On the way back, when we got to a little town in Mississippi, now freedom riders were testers. Their job was to test the facilities to see if they were now following the law. My job was to make a phone call. When I got off and went over to the phone booth, a truck of men, a pickup truck, white men, pull up at the little bus station. They literally dragged Frank and the three girls out, put them in the back of the truck, and drove off. Now, I knew if they found me, it would have been another lynching that night. All of this because you were Black? Of course. Everything was because of that. I mean, if you were Black, it was, you just didn't stand a chance. And here we sit today in 2021. We've had our first Black president. No. We have had our first female and Black and South Asian vice president. How do you feel about where we are today? Oh, I feel good. I really do. Good to know that people were still willing to try to see that change will come. And there are still people who risk their life to see that this happens. And do you feel that we have achieved or are close to the dream that Dr. King spoke of? You know, we have work to do. It ain't over till God says it's over. The Bible tells us this. We must love each other, love our neighbor as ourselves. We are compelled to love one another. And there, that's what's missing in the world today. When Charlie Best was 23 years old, he worked at Woolworth's counter as a busboy in Greensboro, North Carolina. He recalls the day when four college students walked in, sat at the whites only counter, and asked to be served. I was the bus boy, and I was camera bus boy. I was walking through the aisle just like this right here. At 83 years old, I believe that's why Miss Hope kept me on here, because I could move fast. Charles Bess still hasn't slowed down. I was saying, hot stuff, and the people would get out of the way. But he stood still for at least a moment behind the Woolworths counter in 1960. <laughs> that's me. What do you see when you see that young man? <laughs> I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, um, I'm just proud to be uh, uh, a part, part of uh, uh, Woolworth. Put me in that moment where these four young men came in, sat down at this very counter, and then refused to get up. Every time when uh, 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 a waiting would, 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 would tell them, we don't serve color folks here. They would ignore that and kept on and they kept on sitting and asking for coffee. I never did hear them ask for nothing else but coffee. Um, everyone was, was was looking at each, each other, wondering, wondering what, 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 what was happening. I was I was I was standing close close, close by, and uh, I wonder what. What, what was going on? Were you ever scared? Scared? Yeah. No, I wasn't. I wasn't scared at all. Because, because the, reason, the reason I wasn't scared, because I was glad to see it happen. 
there's a new generation coming forward to do those same courageous things to get more, to get closer to, a, to equality. And so when you look at some of the things that we experienced over the summer, even the protests that happened here in Greensboro, what did you see? The black man has moved, has moved forward. He's moved forward, but um, in in some in, in, in some areas in, in some areas still have still haven't got there. When you see these young people, again, it's it's people oftentimes who look like me out there. If you could sit down with them and talk with them, what would you say? I would tell them that. That we, that we can't accomplish nothing by being violent, but we can come, uh, uh, accomplish by uh, praying together and just uh, um, start doing what's right. Advice for the next generation from a busboy who witnessed history, now a man determined to keep it from repeating. I'm glad to be alive to tell the story of the city movement. I'm glad, I'm just, I just praise the Lord that, that, that uh, uh, I'm here to tell the story. The Freedom Riders will always be remembered for their courageous stance and fight for racial equality. Their fight within the civil rights movement continues to impact and inspire future generations. Thanks for watching. For more stories like these, click the subscribe button.